Nick Collier here. And the Hojo motor, although uh, complete in its recent version, still doesn't work. But it's but it's real close, and I and I put a uh, a flywheel on here to give it a little momentum. And uh, you can see if, if I just kick it, it just almost takes off. There's a couple of places where it really, really wants to go, but uh, it doesn't. So uh, I've got to take it apart one more time and do another version. And uh, I have 16 magnets in the stator and six magnets in the rotor. And uh, I think uh, I have to take it back apart and put, uh, and here's, I actually bought another piece of uh, aluminum so that I, because I kind of anticipated that I was going to have to do this again, and uh, so that I can build another stator, and uh, you can see that it works. There's the rotor, and right in there are all the little magnets that actually have a north and a south on each end of the magnet. And in the stator, the north and south is on the thickness of the magnet. So that kind of gives it the, supposedly gives it the ability to, uh, to counterbalance each other and create momentum. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to walk you through a series of events that brought us to, to uh, this point here. And it's probably about... Uh, Oh, I don't know. It's been about a year and a half process. You know, I'm not working on it every day, and I'm not working on it every hour every day. But uh, I work on it when I feel like it. And, um, and uh, you know, it just kind of steadily moves forward. And I like to put t a little time into it every every couple of days these days, although there was a point where I was putting a lot of time into it every day. So uh, we're going to do a, a bit of a slideshow and a bit of a, a video of, uh, of the process of building the Hojo motor. Okay, the conclusion of this little tool that I've been working on for what a week and a half or so is that it's going to it's going to uh, create the outside um, radius of the magnet. Now this little magnet got broken, so uh, I've got to do another one. But you know, and after about an hour's worth of grinding, we can see that the, the magnet is starting to take shape. I'm going to turn it on. We'll just pull it down, and you can see how the, the grinder head is matching the radius of the tool. And it's cutting that outside one inch radius. Now this piece has already been cut, so what I'm doing now is just kind of trimming it and putting, you know, putting the little flat spots on it. Okay, the cutting's done, the grinding is done, and we're going to pull this pin out here. You'll see the pin slide out, which basically it's a drill bit. 
Uh, and then uh, I'll move this all the way back. There we go. Get it back as far as we can. And then this thing, the, the radius tool tends to want to. I mean, it does want to. There it goes. And it slides out. And then uh, take a uh, Allen wrench. Loosen the anvil up a little bit. I mean, not the anvil, but the vise up a little bit. And the magnet should just slip right out. And there it is. Of course, it's full of muck, so we're going to have to clean it off. See that the edges are almost razor sharp. This is a very fragile uh, uh, piece of ceramic. So I have to be really careful and just flatten the edges just a little bit just to kind of give them a little more strength. Okay, it's uh, what, April 25th, 26th, something like that. And uh, we're at the place where the Hojo motor is mostly assembled. Now, uh, the last I left you off with, it, uh, we were cutting little Ha or uh, crescent moon magnets with north and south at, at each end rather than north and south being in the thick part. And, uh, and those magnets go into the, um, the rotor just like that underneath that little clip. You can kind of see this one right here. You can see how the magnet kind of fits right underneath the clip. So once the magnet is, is in place and it's a little bit taller on the north end, then the, uh, the stator slides over the top of the, uh, of the uh, rotor and the machine kind of takes off. It's supposed to take off. Could take off. It just might take off. But unfortunately, so far, it hasn't. It's been very reluctant to take off. But... We have got a process here, and I'm going to show you. Can you come in close to there? Not too close because it starts to blur out. So then, uh, if you'll notice, and what I've done is I've just left two magnets in because uh, it, it gets too confusing with six magnets. And so what I'm doing is just kicking it from one magnet to the other, to the uh, stop place. And you're going to watch in a second. It's going to get to a certain place. Oh, see how that jumped? So it jumped three or four magnets right there. So those three or four magnets, which are there here to about here, are in perfect alignment with one another and with the other magnet. And I'm going to do it one more time just so you can see it. Wham! Jumps right over. So what I have to do now, because and God, I hate to because this is such a pretty uh, stator. What I have to do is take the stator off and set the magnets up on another base or on another stator frame to uh, to give it to give each magnet the ability to adjust sideways and to adjust up and down heightwise to the rotor because I think what happened is is all the magnets are different you know they have different different uh, strengths maybe just slightly different but enough to to make one magnet uh, a little stronger than the other, which means that the rotor doesn't doesn't want to turn freely. So uh, what I want to, and also maybe I can reconfigure the magnets so that you know it's a strong, 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 stronger, stronger, strongest sort of magnet. And uh, but I have to set it up so that the so that the uh, magnets are adjustable. That's the next step. Uh, so far, I got about uh, six months into this which has been a hell of a lot of fun. And I got about another two or three months just building, rebuilding this stator, which it, follow along. Hey, we'll have a good time. Okay, it's May 1st and you know, I've got to replace this, uh, the stator part because I need to get these magnets, this magnet and that magnet, I need to get them to be able to adjust to each other so that, uh, so that the rotor magnet can uh, can create you know forward movement. In order to do that, I've got to rebuild this uh, the stator part. Now 
if we kind of come down here, you can see that I'm in the design phase of this of this rebuilding. Now, basically, what you can do is kind of look at this little edge here, and that's the magnet. And the magnet actually kind of drops down into into here, like about like that. And and so the magnet, this little magnet housing, will pivot on this one little bolt hole. And then, of course, this is our pivot from here to here. And if you look back over in here, I've got the second one drawn here. And that this is how much room we have in between the two. But that's all I need, you know, because if I just move this over a sixteenth of an inch or so, it's going to change the magnetic pull between these two uh, pieces. And uh, if you kind of go over here, and get, let's just kind of get a wider view. You can see here's the whole stator. And I only drew the one because that's all I need. Uh, and over here is the side view of that. Now, before we were looking in, coming from that direction, looking at that view. Now we're going to rotate and look down the side view. And here you can see the magnet is this long, two-inch long magnet by about a quarter inch wide. And all of this housing around it is going to be the aluminum housing that's that that holds the magnet in place and gives it a little support in the middle too and i don't know if you can see it here but there's two small holes here which are the exact holes of this so if you kind of look at again the bolt will go into this hole go in through this and bolt to and basically if you notice the this is going to give us a little further down this will be the stator housing, and this is just a bracket around it. Okay, we've cut the three segments of the hub, and you can see that uh, that's the second part of the hub, and over here we've got the first part of the hub, and the three segments are for the magnet to go into, and you can see this is kind of a broken magnet, so, but it gives you the shape idea. And that slides into the into the hub just like that. Now I've still got to build a bracket to hold the magnet in place, but um, but right now we've got it pretty well set up. And I'm going to take apart the uh, the uh, the hub that I just finished cutting, the other the second half of the hub, and then we'll put them together, and I'll show you how that. Works. Okay, so we've got the um, the second half of the rotor. Uh, disconnected from the uh, from the rotary table and we're going to put the first half of the rotor on top of the second and basically it's set up so <clears throat> so that there is a seven and a half degree difference between the one rotor and the other and that seven and a half degrees gives us the forward thrust of the magnets inside of the um, housing so uh, we'll go ahead and bolt that together and uh, see how everything looks. Uh, we still got to make those brackets though. Okay, uh, still uh, the tail end of the flu, but I am just so bored with being in the house that forget it. I'm coming up here. I got about 19 layers of clothes on, and I'm so fairly. So we've got warm. this block of aluminum. Actually, I bought two blocks, so you get to see one of them in its uh, raw form. And then I came in and uh, cut a radius off of the back side of that, 
And now what I'm doing is cutting a, a circle out of the center of it using the rotary tool. And you can serve sort of, the rotary table is what they call it. And you can kind of see that here. And you can see when I turn the handle, it literally turns the table enough so that it, the cutting tool can spin around and cut out that center so now piece. we'll turn on the, uh, the motor. And basically what I do is uh, come in and raise the table just a little bit. And I may have punched through there. Kind of looks like it. Hard to tell. So we've got the hole cut. Now it's time to go in and cut or drill two little holes and you can kind of see the the magnet bracket. And the magnet bracket wants to slide in on, around this thing and then rotate back and forth to get a little bit of an adjustment out of it. And now we've gone from, we started out with 19 magnets and that didn't work. And so we went down to 18 magnets and that didn't work. And now this particular housing is going to carry 16 magnets. And so basically what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring the the drill down onto it and then move it over three hundred thousandths so that I can drill the second hole and then index over to get uh, the second hole or the third hole drill and the fourth hole drill. Now what I've done is I've come in on the uh, the wheel or the degree wheel of the um, rotary head and marked pre-marked everything so that I know exactly where I'm going to go and I don't have to think about it while I'm drilling. As you can see, we've got the uh, 16 pilot holes drilled. Now we just have to go back and drill the actual holes.